Hey, we're going to do Salisbury steak today with a mushroom gravy. And um, this is going to be a low carb or keto version. I will give you the regular version as we go should you um, want to make it differently for your family. Um, the adjustments we're making are, are very small and can be easily um, made in a conventional way without a lot of change to the recipe. Um, the first thing I'm, gonna, I'm doing right now is I'm actually mincing some um, onion. And if you've been following me very long, you know I food prep a lot. So I cut up some onion the other day, and this is just kind of some basic small diced onion. So I've taken that, and I started on this, and I thought I'd go ahead and show you because I get a lot of questions on knife skills. A lot of people have not been shown how to use a knife. So if you just kind of keep everything kind of piled up tight, you want a sharp knife. A sharp knife is very important. And then literally we're going to start over here on this edge, and we're just going to hold the one end of the knife, and we're going to take it across. And then you go back. And you just kind of keep, and then you're going to pull everything back together. And then you do it again. And you just continue this process until you get the um, size of dice or mints that you would like. So because this is going to go in the Salisbury steak, we don't really want it very noticeable. Um, another technique I have seen that um, I don't choose to do because I don't mind using my knife skills. I feel like it, it keeps you um, good with your skills. Um, I have seen people use a grater um, to do this and you could do that as well. So um, again, this is just minced down. You can see it just kind of gets really small, the pieces there. And we're just gonna go ahead and put this in our bowl. This is gonna be the first thing we're putting in. So um, that is probably about a fourth of an onion, reason a half an onion total. The other um, half is going to go into our mushroom gravy. Okay, so the next thing we're going to add is our ground beef. This is one pound of grass-fed organic ground beef. Um, and basically, this ground beef, the, the cows are fed primarily grass instead of corn. So you're not worrying about them being um, fed GMO ingredients. So a lot of corn is GMOs that's genetically modified. Um, and that's just something that's important to, um, to me and my family. Um, the next thing we're gonna add is just a little bit. This is just garlic. Now this is garlic powder, not garlic salt. And it's just gonna be a little, like about a fourth of a teaspoon. Not very much, just to kind of round out our flavoring. I'm gonna do, this one is um, white pepper. So I'm gonna do that. And again, it's gonna be about a half a teaspoon of that one. Um, and then we're gonna do some Worcestershire sauce. About a teaspoon of that. And then the last two ingredients are going to be our almond flour. So this is gonna be about a half a cup of almond flour. Now we're doing this instead of breadcrumbs. Um, and then we're gonna do one egg. If you like, you can break that egg, um, as I often do, in a um, glass ahead of time if you're worried about that um, shell getting it. And our final ingredient is going to be um, Parmesan cheese. I really like this brand. They don't use any cellulose in it, so sometimes it can be a little bit um, clumpy. And we're going to do about a fourth of a cup. Okay, so right now, all we've done is mix the put the ingredients in. We haven't mixed it yet, so. This is just the ingredients. You can't see the egg and stuff in there. And then sadly, the easiest way to do this is just with our hand. So I am just literally squeezing this with my hand to get this all mixed in and incorporated, okay? Okay, so we have our Salisbury steak all mixed up. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to make our patties. And so this was a pound and then we added another cup or so. So this should make about five patties. So I can see here, I've got four rather big ones, and I have one that's rather small. So I can just take a pinch off of each one, give it to this one. I'm going to turn my burner on medium, put a little bit of avocado oil in, because we use 93% lean beef. So before you press these down, you wanna make them kind of round and flat. I've got my oil in my pan. 
and go all the way around again it's on medium and I've got two pans here ready to go we're gonna get these just kind of browned on all sides and then we're gonna make our gravy and our purpose right now isn't really to cook them our purpose is really just to brown they do not have to be perfect our purpose right now is really just to sear these so that's about how thick I'm making them And then what I'm going to do, I will wash my hands when I get done here, and then we will trade these out. We'll put this pan um, aside. We're going to brown both sides, and then we will um, start working on our gravy. So here's number five. It's actually not going to fit in my pan just yet. Not a big deal. The pan they're going in with gravy, A, is a little bit bigger, but B, once they start cooking, they're going to shrink up a little bit. So it's going to fit no problem. So this is number five. We're going to set it aside. And so um, what I'm going to do um, next is I'm going to wash my hands, so I'll be right back. And um, then we're going to flip these over. Um, I'll show you and we'll let them brown a little bit. And then we're going to get a gravy made for them to finish cooking in. Okay. So where we're at right now is we are just browning these. That's all our goal is. I've got the four of them here in the pan. We have our fifth one over here. We're going to... Um, Add that in a minute once these are brown. And that's literally all we're doing. Our purpose is not to cook them. We just wanna get a little bit of brown on them. And then um, we're simply going to um, finish them off in the gravy. So you see this is all I'm doing is browning. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch burners here because we are going to get this pan going with our gravy. over here with that one on like medium low so we can kind of get this one going so this time I'm gonna do olive oil last time it was avocado oil okay so we have about a fourth of a cup of avocado oil in our pan you can see that okay and then our thickening agent because this is low carb is gonna be xanthan gum so we're gonna um, put this aside but I couldn't want to show you what this looks like okay this is what we will be using to thicken it. But before we do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the other half of that, um, half of an onion. So this is about a fourth of an onion. It's already diced. I um, fixed an onion the other day. And when I cut the onion, don't use all of it. I must always go ahead and dice it up so that I have it whenever I need it. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, slice up our mushrooms okay cutting board here that we just used for the onion okay and then you do want to rinse your mushrooms um, off any um, thing that appears to be black dirt is black dirt that's what it is okay so these are our mushrooms we've got our onions um, in a pan about a fourth of an onion diced in the pan we're just going to slice these mushrooms up the key to this, just like when making your burgers, is trying to make them the same thickness. So it's not about how many mushrooms you get, or how many slices you get from each mushroom. It's about the thickness, because it's the thickness that allows them um, to cook at the same speed. If you slice some real thin and some real thick, and this is, and you can see what we're being pretty consistent here. There's the thickness that we're kind of doing. So we've got our onions going, we're gonna these last two little mushrooms here. These two are tiny, so they're only gonna get about three of these. And now we're gonna add these back over here to our onion, okay? Okay, so here we have our mushroom and our onion. Let's do that. So all we're doing here You can see that our mushrooms are starting to get translucent. Not mushrooms, but onions, other right, it's starting to get translucent. Okay, our mushrooms are cooking just a little bit. Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna add, here we go, about a half a cup of white wine. You could also add red. As I've mentioned before, I use white wine because it doesn't matter what color my sauce. Um, if you, this is gonna be a dark sauce, or white or red wouldn't show. If I was doing a, um, a light sauce, um, it would turn pink, and that is just not very appetizing. So that's why we don't do that. 
So we've got our um, last couple Salisbury steaks are over here cooking. And what I'm going to do with those while this is going, see here. So you can see they are still very raw. And all we're doing is browning them. So we're taking these out, going to put these on the plate. And we're gonna let you see these. Okay, so here's our four that are done. You can see there's, you can still see pink in them. They're just a little bit brown. And that's all we wanted to do is to get them brown. I've got this last one going in the pan. They will all fit, I don't know if you can tell by the size, this, this other pan is bigger, so they will all fit in this pan. So we're gonna move back over here. This has got like a nice little simmer going to it. The reason we want it to simmer is to cook any of that alcohol out, okay? And now what we're gonna do before we add anything else is we're gonna take that xanthamum gum and we're not gonna do a lot. We're gonna add about a half a teaspoon, okay? You see it's just xanthamum gum and we're just gonna put it in there and we're just gonna stir. And this will start um, thickening pretty quick. As soon as it starts thickening, um, I'm going to, you see here, so I'm gonna add there it goes. My beef broth. Okay. So again, this is um, 12 ounces of hot water, and then I just add my beef broth. Okay. I'm gonna flip this steak over here. There we go. All right. So now we're gonna wait for this to come to a boil, so that it gets um, nice and thick. And I see now it's so kind of um, thin right now. If we need to, we can always add um, more of the xanthan gum. It's easier to um, use less and add more than go the other way because it can go from beautiful, thick and silky to slimy and gross in a hot minute, okay? Um, the other thing we're gonna do is, um, once this comes to boil, we're gonna put these back in here and put a lid on them, and then we're gonna let them cook for about 20 minutes in the, um, in the gravy. So um, right now, this is all kind of mixing together. Once it starts simmering, it'll really come together. I'm stirring to kind of help it come together a little bit. Um, I will tell you that this may end up being a little bit thinner than um, the gravy that um, you traditionally use, just because it is low carb and Every time I add something to it, I'm adding a few carbs, so that's not what I want to do. Okay, so we're going to get the, um, let's see, we'll go ahead and put these in. I think we're kind of ready to go there. I'm going to put these in. I'm just going to sit these right here. Can you just kind of see? I'm just going to sit these in here. Okay. So I'll sit these in right on top of everything. And this is a lot bigger, so we have no issues having all five of our steaks in here, okay? So, we've got all of our steaks in there. You can see those nicely. You see it simmering nicely. So, I'm gonna put a lid on this. We're gonna leave it for about 20 minutes and then um, we'll come back when it's done. I'll see you soon. Hey, so our Salisbury steak is done. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And um, it's been cooking for about 20, two minutes. Um, about halfway through, I did flip the steaks over um, just to make sure they cooked all the way through. Um, let me see, look how yummy. It is incredible. So I'm going to plate this for you. Okay, so here so you can see one. Um, just smells so good. So here's an actual steak you can see. Pretty basic, but then here's the good stuff, right? And look how beautiful that gravy is. It is just so amazing. So, and it tastes so good. You won't be disappointed. So I hope you'll try it. And if you do, let me know. Have a great day. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna add is our ground beef. This is one pound of grass-fed organic ground beef. Um, and basically, this ground beef, the, the cows are fed primarily grass instead of corn. So you're not worrying about them being um, fed GMO ingredients. So a lot of corn is GMOs that's genetically modified. Um, and that's just something that's important to, um, to me and my family. Um, the next thing we're gonna add is just a little bit. This is just garlic. Now this is garlic powder, not garlic salt. And it's just gonna be a little, like about a fourth of a teaspoon. Not very much, just to kind of round out our flavoring. I'm gonna do, this one is um, white pepper. So I'm gonna do that. And again, it's gonna be about a half a teaspoon of that one. Um, and then we're gonna do some Worcestershire sauce. About a teaspoon of that. And then the last two ingredients are going to be our almond flour. So this is gonna be about a half a cup of almond flour. Now we're doing this instead of breadcrumbs. Um, and then we're gonna do one egg. If you like, you can break that egg, um, as I often do, in a um, glass ahead of time if you're worried about that um, shell getting in. And our final ingredient is gonna be um, Parmesan cheese. I really like this brand. They don't use any cellulose in it. So sometimes it can be a little bit um, clumpy. And we're gonna do about a fourth of a cup. Okay, so right now, all we've done is mix the, put the ingredients in, we haven't mixed them yet. So, this is just the ingredients. You can't see the egg and stuff in there. And then sadly, the easiest way to do this is just with our hand. So I am just literally squeezing this with my hand to get this all mixed in and incorporated, okay? So often, I have my husband help with this part because this is probably my least um, favorite part. I'm a texture person, so um, you could also do this um, in a food processor. I've done that as, as well. Um, it does a very nice job. The downside, I kind of feel, I, I feel like it over mixes it. And so it, it, you really get this super smooth paste and um, you don't have any texture to it at all. So try it both ways and see which way you like.